218 million dollars, 2,371 music showcases, 247 film screenings, 111 stages, 10 days, one festival, South by Southwest 2014. <laughs> To put it simply, no one can top South by Southwest. It's in a league of its own with cinema, concerts, comedy, cuisine, crowds, cops, corporations, celebrities, and cats. South by Southwest is one of a kind. Of all the corporations we saw this year, one of the biggest was HBO, who brought the entire Game of Thrones to Austin. So HBO is really excited to bring the Game of Thrones exhibition to South by Southwest, which we're calling South by Southwesteros. And what you can see here is our original artifacts straight from the set of Game of Thrones. So from costumes, props, weapons, so you'll see iconic things like the Hand of the Kingpin or Ned's Sword Ice, um, some behind the scenes elements like storyboards and costume drawings. Um, and we have the Iron Throne, of course, where you can have a photo op. <laughs> This truly fits in with Interactive because of our Oculus Rift virtual reality experience, which is the Ascend the Wall. You start off with fans of the show will know that if you're in the Night's Watch, then you, uh, you patrol Castle Black and you go up the North Wall and uh, you can see what's lying beyond in the North. You start in the elevator, once you put the headset on, you're in the elevator in Castle Black, you get a great view of the Castle Black courtyard. It then takes you up as it's taking you up and you're feeling the wind, you're going up, the floor's moving, that's quite exhilarating. And, you know, you feel, see yourself as you're going up, get to the top, you turn around, doors open, you then walk along the actual wall, and uh, then you get to the edge of the wall, the other side, and stuff happens involving wildlings, but I won't give any more away. I have to go home now. HBO wasn't the only heavy hitter in town. Hulu premiered their spooky comedy series, Deadbeat. We talked to the cast on the red carpet about the show before crashing their pool party. We made a TV show that would be totally visually at home in TV, but it has just an odd heartbeat, you know? There's something about it that's just a little, uh, it would be a little uncomfortable, I think, on network TV. It's a clever show, it's a funny show. So, I th and it's a good audience. They, we did our premiere tonight, sold out, and people loved it, and you know, it, play, it just played great. It's not your typical show. It's like two guys smoking weed, and one guy sees ghosts, and I'm this drug dealer named Rufy. If you were a guy, and you were growing up, and you were like a little kid, and you talked to ghosts, you'd be like a weird outcast. We like to think that it's like if the kid from The Sixth Sense grew up to be the dude from The Big Lebowski. <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> you should have seen your face. Adults weren't the only ones partying. Fader celebrated their 13th year here in Austin. They teamed up with My Music RX and brought artists to the stage to raise awareness for music as medicine for children. Today is an amazing family rock concert. It is the largest family rock concert here in Austin during this festival where I believe there's over 600 kids and, and little kids enjoying what it feels like to go to a concert with amazing artists and help us uh, raise money to deliver music medicine. We um, have pioneered music medicine and began to reimagine joy and healing power of music in a hospital setting for kids with cancer and uh, kids who are facing life-threatening illnesses. The one amazing thing about music is um, musicians are very giving, you know, and my music are actually seeing the benefits of that. These artists have been very generous. I mean, bands this year like The Bots or Les Claypool or Aloe Black, in the middle of what's a very hectic week, are willing to get up early, to give us their time, to come here for free, to have their crew and everyone else involved work for free. It's, it's just a testament to, to music and the, and the community that surrounds us down here. It's exciting to meet people like myself who take time out of their schedule to give back to the world and, and doing that through music. So 
I'm excited when I meet those people, and it's been one of the most rewarding parts of being involved with My Music RX. That has PBS. PBS Kids. Uh, PBS. The PBS Kids. Kids. The kids, that is. The kids. Right? Is that the, the long Great. Right. Yeah. I like PBS. How was that? <laughs> South by Southwest's focus on health and medicine went all the way from music to tech. We spoke to the CEO of 23andMe, who was a keynote speaker at South by Interactive. I'm Ann Wojcicki, and I'm the CEO of 23andMe. 23andMe is, you know, owning your genetic data. 23andMe enables you to get your genetic data. By having massive numbers of consumers owning their health records, their lab data, their genetic information, you can actually really create a new type of healthcare society. On November 22nd, we got a warning letter from the FDA asking us to stop uh, providing healthcare information back. So we have, since that time, we've stopped and we are complying with the FDA to understand and to figure out how we can submit as a medical device with the FDA. I think one of the benefits of what 23andMe has done is by having us be at direct-to-consumer and at a $99 price point, we've enabled huge numbers of people who never would have had genetic testing to get access to all this information. That fits in really well with South by Southwest Interactive because you have all these coders and for the first time I think you'll be able to apply technology with data and the consumer and I think, I think we're going to change stuff in healthcare. It's like it's a great, it's a community of people who are really interested in driving change. It's just super exciting. Oh, this is part of our special response team. It's a, 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 a specially trained group of officers that know how to manage they're trained, equipped to manage large crowds, and if crowds get unruly, they're prepared to do whatever it takes to uh, safeguard property, safeguard lives, and, and restore order. If we've learned anything the past few years, it's that none of the craziness at South By can touch the phenomena that is online cat videos. This year, we caught up with Little Bub at Animal Planet's Cats Live Here Happy Hour. My name is Mike Brodovsky. This is my cat, Little Bub. Um, we are at South by Southwest with Animal Planet, and uh, Bub, if you don't know, is the most amazing cat on the planet. Well, I like to say that Bub has the most amazing inbox in the world, uh, so we got an email that said, hey, do you want to do a television show? And uh, I was like, sure, yeah. It's pretty weird, and uh, it's fun, and it, it's basically a slumber party that um, Bub hosts, and Amy Sedaris is her bubby sitter. And then there's a pygmy pony and a bunny rabbit and her friend, uh, guinea pig, who all come and they watch their favorite show within the show, which is Andrew W.K.'s Party Animals. Bob and Andrew sing a song together and fly through space on a giant tuna. And then uh, there's a surprise at the end. If you haven't seen it, you'll have to check it out. We've been noticing for a few years that there is an incredible passion around cats, cat videos, and just this incredible community in general, and we really wanted to capture that. So we came up with the Cats Live Here Happy Hour, um, and you know, the past two years it's been incredibly successful, and I have a feeling it's going to be an Animal Planet tradition from now on. They're snarky, they're mysterious, they're hilarious, they just have, you know, endless personalities. So I think that's kind of what draws people in. And, you know, it's kind of like dog people have dog parks and cat people have the internet. And that's where people go to celebrate, to socialize, and to just enjoy cats. <laughs> And it wouldn't be South By without some epic eats. The almighty creator of the cronut came to bestow upon the people of Austin his new milk and cookie shot. So the cronut is something I, I launched at the bakery uh, last year in May. It's uh, this uh, very uh, flaky uh, donut looking uh, pastry inside there's a cream and we change the flavor every month and now for for this event we're launching the chocolate chip cookie shot with the uh, we will be pouring milk inside so it's something uh, very uh, very different and uh, and very unusual i guess tapping into the innovation and creativity that surrounds us here at south by southwest 
We knew that Dominique was going to give us something different and something special, but we had no idea uh, that the chocolate chip cookie shot was going to spur such excitement from people and, and be something that uh, we'd be able to bring out and, and are really excited by it. I mean, we look at the reactions that we're getting across the spectrum. I mean, just five minutes ago, Kate Upton tweeted out at Dominique. So just knowing that we were going to go that kind of viral just would give us the, um, you know, the fuel and the accelerant to, to, to make this whole event be something larger for us than it might otherwise be. My name is Dominique Ansel and you're watching PBS. I enjoy doing the music, I enjoy doing the posters and shooting the stills and, and there's nothing, I, I don't I like making the t-shirts, I mean I just really enjoy it so much. And people say, you work so much, but I changed work to play a long time ago. I've never worked a day in my life. This is the most fun you could possibly have. I play really hard. One of Austin's newest celebrity chefs, Top Chef star Brian Malarkey, opened the doors of his restaurant to events celebrating a beautiful union of music and munchies. South by Southwest 2014. The restaurant Sir Sucker here in Austin is uh, less than a year old. And it's so fun to actually have the restaurant open during the event. It's fantastic to see the energy. The city is just filled to the brim right now. So much energy, imagination, character. It's just really popping off here. Uh, my name's Steven Golden, and I own a company called Sick. I wanted to do an event at a, at a place that wasn't your typical club or bar. And I didn't want, you know, I wanted to be a little bit nicer, a little bit more relaxing. So we came here and we uh, organized this event and we got different DJs and artists to come. The way that the Seersucker connection came in is that my friend is the owner. It's uh, Chef Brian Malarkey, celebrity chef, amazing, amazing chef. DJ Cat Watts is a great DJ in LA and she plays all over, so I wanted her to come down. And then uh, we have Chino Moreno and the guys from Crosses. My good buddy Steve, who I've known for many, many years, we, we share a uh, a common interest in, in electronic music and I mean all music in general but uh but uh, so we have fun as a DJ team sort of you know we'll, we'll sit and play play off each other and um, it's a good time this year Austin based concert promoters score more had their first official South by showcase jambalaya and gave us an inside look at their exclusive after party the Ilmore but this South by Southwest is weird to me I don't think necessarily that there was an idea behind Score More when it started. I was super passionate about hip hop music. Um, I had always been. I was waiting tables at Texas Land and Cattle, working at the Daily Texan selling ads, and I had a little bit of money, and I was like, let's do a show. And that's when Score More started. You know, the South by thing is really special. The energy of South by is unlike any festival. There's just something so cool about it. This is why South by Southwest is so important, because this is like, we started our first, like, I guess, festival type event, Sunday Swagger, with that build is incredible if you go back and look at it, because it was Wiz Khalifa, Macklemore, Steve Aoki, like, Kendrick, Big Sean, Kendrick, like, school crazy. <laughs> to go back to South by, I think, you know, we were kind of like, be, they, they were becoming more and more aware of our events and as us as promoters and they reached out and they were like hey why don't we do something together and they gave us Austin Music Hall because they're awesome and we're like all right we'll put something together and the jambalaya makes sense because it's a brand that combines hip hop and dance music and so that's kind of how that whole thing came but it's honestly from South by just being like we know you guys know what you're doing you know you guys produce events we kind of thought we were you know we weren't big time enough. We didn't have the Doritos money. <laughs> yeah. But they've been great, dude. South by has been amazing. We have always done the Elmore, and the idea, the principle behind the Elmore was we're concert promoters in Austin. For one week a year, everyone from outside Austin comes to Austin to try to be concert promoters. We are not the type to fight fire with fire. If they want to do that, that's fine. So we wanted to create a house environment for people to come over and hang out after the event to do unannounced performances, have some beverages, invite only. It's not the place where you're gonna get put in a room with the dude who's trying to take a selfie with you like you are when you're walking around. It's like just a chill place to go and hang out. You know, people with multi-platinum albums just wanna play our party. Like there's no fee, they just wanna play it. And it's like, I think that that's an indicator of like how far we've come, you know, from begging for an opportunity to book an artist, to having artists hit us up, being like, yo, make sure that we get a good slot time. Hi, Mom. Uh, oh, yeah, 
Mom, we made it. <laughs> Of the 108 films that premiered at South by this year, only one starred the Nicolas Cage. The dude is untold. I, I've always kind of dabbled in the independent movies, if you look carefully. I mean, there's a Bad Lieutenant or a Lord of War or a Wild at Heart, but I, this one's a special movie. Uh, working with David was excellent. I like what he brings out in his actors, a spontaneity to his process, and that makes the actors more spontaneous. Well, for me, I live in Austin, and we made the film here in Austin, and the uh, you know, majority of the cast and crew are, are, are Texas-based filmmakers, and so we had a great time making the movie here, and it's nice to be able to present it back home. I have a sense of pride and also just a, a gigantic sense of gratitude that it's, like, happening here. And even though it's, like, cool to complain about how it's getting so big and getting so crazy, um, it's quite an honor, and I think Austin is really lucky to have um, this festival. You know, you learn you know, various things. Working with it, I feel like Nick. And you know, there's, it's uh, it's not their job to really teach you how to do it. It's like your job to take notes and, and watch what they're doing. Silicon Valley, the new HBO series from Austin's Mike Judge, bridged the gap between tech, film, and comedy. Uh, welcome to PBS Public Broadcasting Service. It's for you. If you want to live here, you've got to deliver. Like Steve. Jobs are Wozniak. Steve Jobs or Steve... No, I heard one. you. Which one? Jobs. Jobs was a poser. He didn't even write code. <laughs> I always yeah, love no, premiering love something in Austin because the audiences are great. It's just kind of a good place to show something. We had a guy in here in almost the exact same situation. Take the money or keep the company. He, he shot himself because he turned down the money? Yeah. Or no, no he took the money. Or no. I, no, he did not. I don't... You know what? I don't remember. I come here with uh, friends of mine on an HBO Dude, show How's it going, made by man? Mike Judge. I mean, that's literally, going, check that one off the dream list. Of course, so, man. yeah, that's great. So, uh, it's, what, what better a place than Austin, Texas, Portland of the South. <laughs> it's been interesting coming here and seeing it and being like, oh, we did kind of, these guys kind of nailed this world because everybody has like apps here and like the tech speak, like the weird, like made up words that now have a meaning and now everyone Everyone uses them as if they've been using them for their whole lives. It's such an interesting culture, and you know, uh, I think our show does a good job of capturing that. What do we do? All those ones and zeros streaming directly to your smartphone every chance if you can't get the Skrillex in under 12 seconds? It's not magic, it's talent and sweat. That's what we do. I like to be on the balls of my feet. I like to move. I like surprise. I like chaos. I like to see what will happen if you just go dink to people. True. Spandau Ballet is back, and this time with a documentary. We, we, we got together back in 2009 after 20 year absence. And bit of a self-destruct moment, but um, this time around it was only four years and we were in rehearsal rooms just the other week, sounded fantastic and we're playing tomorrow night as well at the Vulcan Gas Company, so, so not only you've got the film, you've got us back together again as well. First time in America for 28 years. It's the first time that I've ever been approached to come and direct a project rather than me conceiving of something and, and kind of, you know, working for X number of years to get it off the ground. What George <clears throat> has done in this film is really uh, capture an era. Um, not just, it's not just a dry documentary about a history of a group, it really isn't that, it's, it's about more than that, it's about all the people who, who lived through that period, it's a social document if you like, and, and in its simplest form it's about our friendship and how it's gone through dark places and, uh, and it's also come out the other side intact. Yeah, more mm -hmm. like a ghost train. Yeah, I was never a rabid Spandau Ballet fan, but growing up in the 80s, there was no way that I wasn't going to be immersed in that music because it, it you know, especially growing up in the UK, it soundtracked that decade. You're the first band to incorporate fashion, music, and video. How did this come about? You just got to have the feeling in there of style. This is Tony, John, Dave, and Martin. I'm Gary, and we're Spandau Ballet. 
South by Southwest perfect for us. You know, mm, it's uh, yeah. it's not only a it's a film and music um, festival, so <clears throat> and, and indie and very intelligent festival, and you know we're we're um, we're, we're, boxes, we're yeah, thrilled to be embraced by that, and it's a it's a it's a great place for us to you know. So on on the day of the screening, we're also playing that night. Yeah, this would be related. No, no. would you be related to, related to each other? I wouldn't be related to him. <laughs> I'm not related to him. Long years know. of living with and each he's other. Not to him. Right. Well, these guys talk funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> South by Southwest film goers got a socially conscious history lesson with the North American premiere of the Cesar Chavez biopic. Aspirations of the vast majority of farm workers. Every American has a stake to bring about social change within the system. So who the hell is this Cesar Chavez? Yeah, I heard he's Mexican. Seems a safe bet. You know, we've had the last, over the last couple of days, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of activists that marched with my father and they talked about all the different struggles, but also they talked about how his life and work inspired them to go out and, and to improve their own communities. And so the fact that we have the North American um, uh, premiere here at South by Southwest is, is really appropriate. Very, very, like just a honorable man, very quiet man, very humble man, and how to do that without playing that. And, uh, and, you know, Diego sometimes said uh, it's okay to just be there and be, you know, you're starring in the movie, but, like, like just it's okay to not be noticed at the si on the side. And it's kind of tough and it's, it's nerve-wracking because you're like, oh, man, I want people to like it. I want people to like the performance and everything. But, um, you know, it, he seemed to like it while we were shooting, and hopefully people like it as well. Last report estimates that we've cost them $17 million. We can't hold on much longer. We're going to break this damn strike. And, you know, a lot of the history of, of what Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta and all UFW did is written down. It's not in all of our books, you know, but it's there. You see it on Cesar Chavez Street and Boulevard and murals. But at the same time, people don't know who that person is. And behind that name, you know, they don't really understand their history behind that movement and how much it relates to them today, how relevant it is for today, you know. And when you're talking about food justice or you know, fair wages or fair trade, like how that applies to right here and now and how they can be a part of that conversation. So I'm really grateful to be a part of a film that tells that story and allows more people to be, become involved. You know, as a female actress, it's so exciting to get to play a role that, that brings light to a woman who is still alive today, who impacted our history in such a big way. What are you doing? I'm standing up because somebody has to. This is Evan. This is the moment, Cesar. This is what we came here to do. One indie star not to be overshadowed by a corporation was Dope Easy. Hailing from the Lone Star State, the Houston artist took full advantage of his time at South by Southwest, playing 14 shows in just three days. It's actually crazy. Um, my, this is my fourth year, um, my third as an official artist. My very first year I came, I wasn't going to come. Um, I have an assistant by the name of Lauren, and she was telling me, I don't even worry, I just really need to go out there on faith and, and, you to, and go out there and network. So um, I went out there, and the first thing I heard about was Bun B having a birthday party. Ended up meeting um, Sasha from Scoremore. I ended up meeting with him, connecting with him. I ended up meeting another promoter from South By. And um, next year I was an official artist. We ended up having three shows. The next year we had eight shows. The next big thing, I think, is just growing. Just growing. Just keep um, trying to build outside of the city now. I feel like we've done a whole lot in Houston. Um, personally, I feel like we've hit the ceiling there. So everything else that we can do there at home, we need to be doing outside on the road. I, want, I just want bigger looks, bigger looks. All we missing now is just being heard and being, um, being seen. The biggest advice that I can get, give is build relationships. Like, no matter how good you are with the music, if you if you putting your all into the music, that's one thing. But if you can go out there and network and build solid relationships with people, plant seeds and let them grow, I think that there will take you a lot farther than just actually being good on the mic. You be having talent, um, making music, I think that'll be the plus. But for me, from my experience, the biggest thing I've, I've gained was, was from building relationships, actually being hands-on with the people, having a, um, a, a solid cosign from someone, you know what I'm saying, just because I went out there and built that relationship with them. At South by Southwest, Austin's own Rob Thomas premiered Veronica Mars, his cult TV series turned Kickstarter funded film. Back in my 20s, I played in a fairly mediocre local band and uh, it was back in the day when you could get into South by Southwest as a mediocre local band and so we would play those Thursday night at six o'clock showcases when you got your eight friends there and 
So this is a much better way to come back to South by Southwest. With South by Southwest, each year is more impressive than the last. And we can't wait to see what magic 2015 brings. We'll see you then. And probably Grumpy Cat, too. Grumpy Cat stays grumpy when she's watching PBS. <laughs> hey, PBS, this is Hannibal Burris. Hey, congratulations. Y'all still got money? That's crazy. Hey, what's up? I'm Chino from uh, Crosses and Deftones, and you're watching PBS. Hello, I'm Mike Judge, and you are watching PBS. Everybody wants everything for free now. This is a trend that I find very discouraging, not only for me, uh, it's not just something I'm affected by, but I see it throughout the world we live in now. And if you're not willing to pay for anything and people can't earn a living, doing what you enjoy watching or listening to or reading, it may go away.